All right, Coach, um, Friday was what it was after looking at the tape. What did you like the most? I thought, you know, we moved the ball really well uh, against a really good defense. Probably the best we've seen this year as far as athleticism and speed and size. Uh, defensively, you know, we were in the right spot a lot. We just didn't tackle well, you know, and that, that was obvious, you know, Friday night and it's obvious Saturday morning when we watch a film. Uh, you, we're just undersized, you know, we're uh, compared to them. And uh, whenever you play someone that big and they run that kind of offense, it, it, it's tough. You know, we we have trouble with teams like that. You know, power teams that are bigger than us, it's going to give us trouble. It's probably going to give anybody trouble. Uh, but uh, the effort was good. The energy was good. I thought we traveled good. Uh, I thought we played well, you know, except for just not being able to tackle them in space. And, uh, you know, I, the, the playing them is tough on us because we just don't match up size-wise uh, in the back end or the front end. Uh, so, like they say, you know, you just got to learn what you can get out of it and move on. I'm not trying to diminish the remainder of your opponents, but how is the how does it feel to kind of have the weight of Holt, or not Holt, of Weatherford and Euless out there? Yeah, you know, I think, I think Weatherford and Trinity, you know, two of the better teams. I think everybody's good, though, you know. Richland surprised everybody by beating Abilene and uh, uh, Weatherford, you know, putting points on everybody. Trinity's going to be as good as anybody because of what they do. Uh, Haltom is, is going to be fine. You know, I know Weatherford beat them, but they've put a lot of points on Weatherford. And, uh, every, LD Bell, you know, they're 0-2, but they're big and, and they run an offense, a triple option that's tough to handle. So uh, they'll get their feet. Uh, back on the ground because that, that thing is a different animal that you don't see very often. and uh, So it's going to be tough. All, all of our remaining games, all four of them are going to be knocked down, drag out kind of games and we're going to have to play well to win them. And looking at Abilene, they're, they're two and four, which you know we're not used to seeing that really. They've played some really good teams mm -hmm. like the lead, Tascosa. Uh, where do you see them? Well, I mean, Abilene's a lot like they always are. You know, they're well coached. Their kids are a lot like our kids. Uh, they play extremely hard. They've got some talent. Uh, they they played some really good teams. Uh, Richland is better than their record. You know, uh, they got out on them and kind of held on. And Abilene kind of came back at the end and got a piece, but then they had a trick play at the very end. Richland did and won the game. Uh, they they have played uh, uh, some really good teams. Midland Lee is is exceptional. Tascosa is really good. Uh, and Cooper is really good. They're undefeated, Abilene Cooper. Uh, so they played a tough schedule. And uh, but but after seeing film on them, the, they've got a same kind of team they've had ever since I've been here. And uh, it's going to be a big game on Friday for both of us because we're both sitting here one and one, and uh, you know need to get back on the winning track. Hey, coach, I'm sorry, just running on that question about having, uh, they run you know, two different quarterbacks into the wildcard. Mm -hmm. This is probably something we haven't seen all season. How is the team going to uh, train or be ready for something? Well, I mean, uh, we've been playing Abilene, you know, almost every year I've been here. There was a, maybe one or two years when we were in a panhandle district that we didn't play them. But, uh, you know, they've always ran the Wildcat. And they've always, you know, they haven't always played two quarterbacks. But but these two guys they got are, are, are you know, are real similar to what they've had in the past. Uh, the... They, they really haven't changed much on offense. They, they run kind of what they've always ran. And uh, yeah, I know they've got, you know, a new head coach, uh, Mike Fullen, but, but Mike's been there for a really long time. And he's been a part of their success since the 90s. And uh, they haven't changed too much. And we're just expecting them to do what we see on film and what we've seen in the past. You mentioned the change with Coach Fullen. Are you seeing anything different from Del Van Cox and what they were doing in the you know, it's not a whole lot. You know, uh, it really isn't. They, they still want to run the GT and the GF, uh, run it different ways out of different sets. Uh, you know, they still like to run the sprint out and the bootleg. And, uh, on, and, and they got two quarterbacks. You know, they got a senior that's got experience, and, and then they've got a junior that's, that's a little bit more of an athlete, kind of throws it a little bit better. But, but uh, you know, they're playing both of them, and they're both effective. And, and it makes it hard to prepare because, you know, usually if you're if you're preparing for one guy, you, you can kind of find out what he's the best at. But these guys are they're they're both really good quarterbacks and they're real different. Uh, 
Uh, and then they, like we said, they, they also run the Wildcat with their running back. You know, they'll put him back there and, and uh, have two running backs in the backfield. And even even Abby, their quarterback, will, will run the Wildcat too because he's been playing running back for him some also back when, uh, when Dodson was hurt. So, uh, you know, they've got a lot of kids that can do a lot of things, and it, it makes it tough to get uh, ready for them. Yeah. And it's the closest team that you really can play other than Abilene Cooper. So does this kind of make things more interesting? Get yeah. Is flowing a little more for you and the, and the players? Oh, I think so, yeah. I mean, Abilene's a big rival. Like you said, we've been playing them for over 100 years. Uh, it's a great ball game. Uh, I, you know, I, I really like playing Abilene High. It's always a, a tough, hard-fought game, and we're real similar to each other. And uh, like you said, it's our nearest 6A school to us in the state of Texas. Uh, we don't get to play right now anyway, the Midlands and the Odessas. So uh, it's always fun to play a rival from the old Little Southwest Conference. And, and it uh, it's a big game. It's a big district game for us. And last year, you know, we, we were lucky enough to pull that thing out uh, at the very last minute with a field goal. And I'm sure that's got them, you know, fired up. Uh, they're going to come in here to San Angelo Stadium Friday remembering that game because they probably should have won that game, you know. Uh, they outplayed us in that game. We had a we had a defensive touchdown, picked up a fumble and ran it back for a touchdown and then had to kick a field goal with no time left to win the game. So, uh, you know, they're going to come in here ready to go and, and we've got to match that intensity. You say their kids are a lot like your kids. What are some of those similarities? Well, I mean, we just kind of have West Texas kids, you know. Uh, you know, you, when you when you travel over to DFW, you know, you run into a little bit better athlete, a little bigger kid. Uh, and uh, out here, you know, we're kind of just not not to be uh, negative about it. I mean, I love the, our kids, and and uh, they're hard hard nosed, get after you, uh, play as hard as they can kind of guys. Uh, and that's what Abilene has too. We're just sometimes not as physically talented as some of the other six A's that we have to go play sometimes in DFW. But uh, like I've said publicly many times, you know, I wouldn't trade our kids for anybody because they're fun to coach. They do what you ask them to do. They show up on time and work hard every day. I don't have to deal with a bunch of drama. And uh, uh, it's a lot of fun to be here. And uh, so I, what I mean by that is that Abilene has those same kinds of kids that show up on time, ready to go to work. And, and I'm sure they don't deal with a lot of drama either. It's just it's just a little different uh, way they're raised or whatever you want to call it out here. You know, there's, uh, it's just kind of the way it's always been. Coach, uh, hearing that UIL's kind of informed you guys that y'all may not be in a DFW district next season, uh, uh, how, how true is that, and are you buying any of that? Well, I mean, uh, it's not a secret. Uh, Dr. Brightup at the last uh, AD's meeting in San Antonio publicly said that uh, San Angelo will not be in the Fort Worth area. You know, he didn't say where we would be, obviously. We could still go to Colleen or... San Antonio or Waco or whatever, but he did publicly say that San Angelo will not be in the Fort Worth area. So uh, I'm taking him at his word. So I don't I don't know where we're going to be. Obviously, nobody does. But the snapshot day is October the 25th. We turn in our number, and then the way they do it now is they actually release those numbers later on, a couple of weeks later, and everyone can kind of see where everybody's at. Uh, they don't tell you what the cutoffs are. They don't tell you. You know what the districts are, but you can you can kind of look and find that where that cutoff's going to be pretty close anyway. And uh, uh, when you do that, then you can figure some things out. You know, there's there's some rumors that Tascosa may drop. You know, I don't know if they will or not. I don't I don't know anything about their numbers or, or anything about Amarillo ISD. But uh, if they drop, then that would certainly make it a lot easier on the UIL to put us and Abilene back out with uh, Midland, Odessa, and Friendship. You know. It, the travel wouldn't be that tough on anybody, and uh, it would make all the sense in the world. But if Tascosa stays up, then I don't know what they're going to do. You know, uh, uh, we we would certainly like to be in West Texas. Uh, those are our those are our sister schools. Long time playing each other, the closest six A's to us uh, geographically, and uh, it's it's where we belong. It's it's where Abilene belongs. But uh, you know, it you never know what's going to happen, and. We, and bottom line is wherever we're at, we're going to be, uh, we're going to accept it and we're going to work hard to uh, uh, win. The, uh, you guys always look forward to being back at home. How 
how much are y'all looking forward to, to coming back, certainly after what happened? Yeah, I mean, we always love playing here. I mean, it's, you know, our travel is brutal and, and it is what it is, but, but when we can play at home and in front of these big crowds like, like last time we played Weatherford, you know, you, you can't beat that. Uh, we go on the road to some really good places and we don't see crowds like that, you know, ever. Uh, this, this town supports us and, it, and it's very much appreciated. And, uh, you know, I think we put a good product out on the field. I think it's very entertaining. Uh, I think people like to come watch us play. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun to play in San Angelo Stadium. It's a great stadium. It's got tons of history. Uh, it, you know, we've got great facilities here. Uh, I don't, you know, like I've told you before, I love, I love my job and uh, all of that's part of it. You're a little bit, or you are over the halfway point now in this season. Uh, what's impressed you the most about your team? Our resiliency, you know, like coming back against Pebble Hills the way we did, fighting Weatherford off the way we did, uh, playing Cedar Park to the very end, feeling like we should have won that game. Uh, our resiliency has been really good, you know. Uh, the other night, you know, with about eight minutes to go, whatever it was, I decided to, to put our backups in. You know, we were down 49-24 and, and just felt like, you know, we, I wanted to, for better words, uh, you know, just save save what we got, uh, try to get to the next one healthy. And uh, so that was me doing that. Uh, it wasn't our kids. You know, I had somebody said something to me about we, we might have given up or something. No, there's a big difference in giving up and, and knowing when to uh, uh, move on to the next, you know, deal. We got four more tough games coming up, and we got to stay healthy as we can in those games. And, uh, so that's what we did. But our, our resiliency of this football team is astronomical. It's, it's a, that's what makes them so much fun to coach is they show up every Monday morning, you know, wanting to know what our new game plan is and, and uh, get out there and execute it and try to get better this week so we can uh, get after the Eagles. And as you've entered the home stretch now, you know, the last several games, uh, what, do you, what sticks in your mind as far as things that you need to improve upon? Well, I mean, obviously we've got to tackle better. I mean, we did, we did not tackle well. You know, we didn't tackle well against uh, Pebble Hills the first half. Uh, we did against Weatherford. I thought we did against Cedar Park. And, you know, it kind of comes and goes. We've had some injuries in the secondary, too, that have kind of added to some of that. But uh, uh, we got to tackle better. And we gotta, our receivers got to block better. Uh, we, we blocked really well against Weatherford, and then we go to Trinity, and we didn't block so well. with our. I'm talking about our, our quick game stuff where we got to get some blocks on the perimeter. And, uh, we got to do a better job of those two things, but but it's not it's not from a lack of of trying. It's just we just got to get better at it. You know, we we're, we're working on that in practice, trying to do some things to get better with, with our open field tackling. And uh, you know, I think we will. Yeah, I think our kids will accept that challenge, and uh, I think you'll see a better tackling team on Friday. We've seen Malik Finley kind of sidelined for the last few weeks. Is, is there? Uh, I, I don't really know one. You know, I'm, I'm not going to talk about injuries. Uh, he's not playing right now, and uh, we're hoping to get him back uh, before the season's over. And I know he's doing everything he can to try to get back. Uh, and uh, he's a senior. He's a great kid. He's a two-year starter for us as a sophomore, junior, and he's a captain on this football team. And uh, we need him. You know, we need him on the on the field. And I know he's doing everything he can to get back out there.